that 10% of the population reports hearing difficulty. That's 36 million people with hearing loss. And it's not just something that affects you as you get older. In fact, 65% of the people who suffer from hearing loss are younger than age 65. And today we are joined by Deborah Youngsma and Katie Kozak, both audiologists from the Spectrum Health Medical Group Hearing Center. It's great to have you ladies here today. Thank you. Thank you. So start off by talking about exactly what an audiologist does and what is exactly the, um, the partnership that you have with your patients. An audiologist is um, just a professional who has a master's or doctoral degree that specializes in, um, in diagnosing and treating hearing loss and balance disorders. Okay. They go hand in hand if you have hearing loss, maybe sometimes you can have a disorder that also causes you balance equilibrium issues too? It can. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So testing that can be run, um, you know, to determine whether or not there are balance, balance problems as well as the hearing hearing loss. You would think mm -hmm. that, that, yeah, that would go hand in hand. Now, you know, you think of hearing loss, you know, I think of like my great grandpa or, or, or an older, you know, relative, but that's not necessarily the case. It's affecting people at a much younger age. It's affecting all age groups because of the different noises that they can be exposed to, the young children, the adults, the baby boomers, the numbers are just staggering as to who can have hearing loss. It's not a sign yes. of old age So what are some anymore. of the symptoms we should look for? when you think you might be, or someone in your family or yourself might be having some issues? Symptoms to hearing loss, some, anything? Um, well, if, if, um, if you, say, listen to the TV or radio at louder than others in the home, or if, um, if you're having to ask others to repeat on a regular basis, mm -hmm. if you're struggling with uh, hearing and background noise, or maybe even, um, if you feel like you're hearing okay, just not quite understanding certain words, then that those could be indications of, you know, some hearing loss. Okay, so our, when we talk about hearing loss, is this something that maybe we bring on ourselves, or can there be some underlying medical conditions that can sometimes bring on hearing loss? Well, there's different causes of hearing loss. Um, noise exposure is probably the number one cause of hearing loss. Um, aging is another cause, um, ear infections, earwax, um, injury to the ear, a head, head injury. Um, birth defects, those are other things that can cause hearing loss, but hear, uh, noise exposure is the number one cause, and we're constantly bombarded by noise in the world today. It's mm -hmm. very noisy. And yeah. it's a noisy world, oh my gosh, it's, it's pretty noisy out there, not just externally, but even what we do to ourselves, because everybody has the headsets on or the mm -hmm. earplugs. Correct, and, uh, correct. So how loud is too loud? Well, the, the, the uh, 130 dB is going to be extremely loud, and the the shorter the time you get to listen to the noise before the damage occurs. And average conversation, I think, is about 60 dB. So there's a wow. wide range. So the louder the noise, the less time you have to listen okay. before damage occurs. Well, and you know, we, I, I'm a mom, I've got three kids, and I have to be honest that I haven't always been probably as uh, vigilant as I should be in monitoring the noise level of my kids. So. Are we at an age, or are we at a stage in our technology usage, especially with small kids, where we're really letting them do long-term damage to their hearing? We are. You know, a good indication um, as far as that goes is if, if while your child is wearing the headphones, um, if you're able to hear that music, you know, it's then it's, it's probably it's too, too loud. loud. Okay, yeah. And you need to constantly tell them to turn it down. Mm -hmm. That's a good rule of thumb. Because once the ears are damaged, is that like irreversible? He, Most noise, of the time. Yeah, it's cumulative. So what happens when they're young is going to carry on until they're old. Okay. So are there things, though, that you can do? I'm guessing that with the way technology has really advanced on so many other levels, that there probably really are some super good solutions for people who are suffering from hearing loss. Mm -hmm. Katie, what? If someone comes to you, presents with some hearing issues, what are you able to help them with? How, what do you do? Um, well, as far as as far as ear protection goes, there's there's a number of different ear protectors out there. Foam plugs. There's the ear muffs. There's custom style ear plugs. Um, you know, so what we would do is we'd have somebody come in. We'd do a thorough case history. We'd look in the ears. We'd run some 
um, a pressure test. We'd have them listen for some tones, do some speech understanding tests, uh, and just go from there. And then hearing aids, the technology. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're yes. getting so small, you just not, you know. You they are, and they're almost them. invisible. Right. Yep. And then we, we spend a good amount of time talking with the patient about the hearing aids, their lifestyle, their budget, um, and what would be appropriate for their hearing loss. Excellent. So if somebody wants to uh, get a hold of you and get more information, we have the information right here on our screen. And sometimes it is just a phone call or a referral from your doctor. Correct. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Well, thanks, ladies. Thank you so much for giving us some important information. Good reminders, right? Yeah, I know. It's like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. I know I wear earpiece every yeah, day. I know. They're always talking 25 to 25 years. I try to keep it on low. <laughs> good, good. Okay. Thank you, ladies. Appreciate Thank you. Your we'll be right Thank back. You. This is 8 West.